Good day to you students. Today we will be dealing with uh, stability and center of mass. Let's start. For us to be able to determine stability and the center of mass of an object to form a, uh, a sentence, we need to drag the following words into the correct boxes. The idea of moments can help us understand why some objects are stable while others are more likely to topple over. A tall glass is easily knocked over because most of its mass is concentrated high up above its stem. So this really gives us the definition of stability and center of mass. So we check. That's correct. We are to observe the figure below. Looking at this glass cup, the weight in figure A is acting downward. Why the contact force? Let's say the glass is placed on a table, is acting upwards. For figure B, the glass also, as in figure A, is filled with a liquid. The weight is acting downward, while the contact force is also acting upwards. But for figure C, the line of action of its weight is beyond the edge of the base, that is where the contact force lies. So the glass will likely tip right over. So we are to drag the following words into the correct boxes for us to be able to have a full definition of those particular observations. In figure A, when the glass is upright, okay, the weight, is it available? Yes, acts downwards. And the contact force of the table acts upwards. In figure B, if the glass is tilted to the right, the forces are no longer in line. It has an anticlockwise moment, which tips the glass back to its upright position. In figure C, since the glass is tipped further, the weight of the glass, all right, acts to the right, and it has a clockwise moment, which makes the glass to tip over. So we check. Correct. So let's define center of mass. Object behave as if all of its mass were concentrated at its center. This is known as the center of mass. Let's check whether we are true or false. Okay, true, that's correct. A tall glass is top heavy because the center of mass is high up. Force of gravity acts on the mass of the glass. Each of the glass is pulled by the Earth's gravity. We have to drag the following words into the correct boxes to also define center of mass. For an object to be stable, it should have a low center of mass, okay, and a wide base. So, let's check. Correct. Balancing is the clue used to find an object center of mass. Would that be true or false? Let's see true. That's correct. Now, let's deal with this past question. The diagram shows the forces acting on a cyclist. 
Explain how you can show that the cyclist in A above is in equilibrium. In B, are the forces of the cyclist balanced? Now, how can you tell? Will the cyclist be described as stable or unstable? We have to explain our answer. So we look right at the figure, which is on my top right corner here. We have figure A and figure B. For figure A, we have the cyclist whose weight is acting downward and the contact force is acting upward. For figure B, the cyclist's weight is acting downward, the contact force is acting upward, while the friction is acting to the right of the cyclist and its weight is in direction of clockwise moment. So, in figure A, the weight of the man is directed and acting downward, which we always act downward, while the contact force, okay, from the man is directed upwards. In figure B, during movement, the weight of the man is directed and acting downwards while the friction is directed along the right hand side on the road. This is balanced by the contact force acting directly opposite the weight and the friction. The cyclist in B is described as unstable because friction is at work due to a change in motion. Can we check? That's correct. Now, question two. The diagram below shows a 3.0 meters uniform beam AB pivoted. 1.0 meters from the NA. The weight of the beam is 200 newtons. A. We are to copy the diagram and mark the beam's center of mass. B. Add arrows to show the following forces. The weight of the beam, the contact force on the beam, and the pipe volt. C. The third force F. Presses down on the beam at the end point A. What value of F is needed to balance the beam? D. When this force F is applied, what is the value of the contact force that the pivot exerts on the beam? Here yeah, now, the solution has been provided, but I will take you through. How to go about how to go about it? Let's see. Now, looking at question A and question B together, we are to look for what um, the center of mass. Don't forget that the beam is. 3 meters long. And when we are talking about center of mass, the center of mass of any object will always be at the center. So, we draw the diagram now. I have where the pivot is, like this. So, with that, my weight is acting downward. Contact force is acting upward. Now, this region from here to here is 1.0 meters and weight is being placed here or let's call it force F then from the pivot down to the other edge is 2 meters 
2.0 meters. And don't forget that center of mass, we always act at the center. 1 plus 2 is 3. Unit is in meters, that's 3 meters. Divided by 2, we give us 1.5 meters. So let's pick this point as 1.5 meters. That will form the region of our center of mass. So I have F now to be the force that we are asked to label. I have W as weight. I have CF as contact force. And I have CM as the center of mass. Now, let's go to the C part for us to do the calculation. We are to look for F and um, we are also to look for the contact force. So, how do we get F? We are to look for weight. The weight is already given. The weight is 200 Newton. So, I will draw again. Now, yeah. So, this is the pivot. From here to here is 1.0 meters. I have F here. And here lies my center of mass. Here is the contact force. Here is the weight that is acting downwards. It is 200 newtons. And here, all in total, from here to the last point, is 2.0 meters. Now, places to the left. We have anti-clockwise moment and places to the right, we have clockwise moment. If you should look at the diagram critically, we will see that we have two anti-clockwise moment. One from the one meter pivot down to the force, which is unknown, and from the edge, two meter of the whole length of the beam, down to the what? Down to the force. Then we also have one clockwise moment from the edge of the pivot all down to the right. Now, for the anti-clockwise moment, we pick the first one and we also pick the second one. For the first one, I have, that's 1.0 times F. That gives F on its own. For the anti second anticlockwise moment, I have 3.0 in terms of the distance times F. That gives 3F. So the total now gives us 4, 4F. Now, for the clockwise moment, for the clockwise moment, we only have one, and that is 200 Newton, which is the first, multiplied by the distance that we have, 2.0 meters, and that is 400 Newton meter. And don't forget that we are, wherever we have the pivot, the sum of the um, total anti-clockwise moment, the total must be equal to the sum of the what? clockwise moment. Therefore, I have 4F, which is F representing force now, is equals to 400 Newton meter. I am to divide both sides by 4. So I have 4F over 4 is equivalent to 400 Newton meter over 4. That 4 in that respect is in meters. So this we cancel this, this we cancel this. 4 in 400, that's 100. So this and this will go. Then I have 100 Newton. That is the value of the force 
associated with what the left hand side the anticlockwise moment so we are also to get the d part we are to get the value of the contact force that is with the total um accumulation of all the forces acting on the um ruler or rule for the contact force now we have weight which is 200 newton we have our force to be 100 newton but we should not forget that the first anticlockwise moment was rated as f so that will give rise to what am1 from am1 that will give rise to force one that's 100 newton and for force two from the second anticlockwise moment we have 3f that will be three times 100 newton that's equivalent to 300 newton and also we will now add the total forces together to make the um, contact force so that gives 200 plus 100 plus 300 all in newtons so our answer now is 600 newtons that solves the question so we proceed now we move on so looking at this um, question once again in an experiment six identical bags of flour are arranged by a nine kilogram mass two bags of flour are removed what mass will balance the remaining bags so let's take it one step at a time now we have six bags all having a balance of nine kilogram mass what will be the weight or um, the mass rather of one bag that will be nine over six kilograms and that is equivalent to three over two kilograms now from six bags two bags were removed that means we have six minus two bags that is four bags so what would be the equivalent weight of these four bags and that what for four bags we now have three over two times four so we check the kil it's in kilogram so two year one two year two three times two that gives us six kilogram do we have it as an option we check so six kilogram then we check that's correct now let's proceed for an object to be stable it must have a low center of mass and a wide base is that true let's check that's correct now we've come to the end of the class but we won't go without having a summary of all what we've done today moments help to understand why some objects are stable and others do topple over that statement is fully um correct but we can't leave other options out we have to check their validity also Moment helps to understand why some liquids are stable and others do topple over. That statement is false. We are not dealing with uh, liquids there. We are dealing with the stability of objects. Moment helps to understand why some objects are not stable and others do topple over. The statement is false. So the statement which is correct here and valid is that moments helps to understand why some objects are stable and others do topple over so we see that's correct we have come to the end of today's class do well to check our 
website www.edimate.com for more of our interactive um, content and videos. Do have a great time. Thank you for listening.